Hi, DV Asia. Uh, welcome to Vegas. <laughs> My name's John Wadelton. I'm product manager for Nuke. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of what's coming up in our release later in the year. Um, I don't have time to show you everything. There's lots and lots of stuff in there. This is just a little bit of a tech preview of what's coming up in the next release. So we're going to go over to the screen now and I'm going to show you some of these uh, new features that are coming up. So we're going to work on this plate here um, just to do a little bit of work on it. Um, we're just going to do a little bit of a set extension on the top here um, with a bit of CG which I've got there. Just a little bit of a replacement. So it's not a really super exciting uh, shot but it shows the really cool tech that we've got coming up in this new release so i hope you can see the first thing that we've problem we've got to solve here is there's a lot of grain in this image um, so typically when you're compositing uh, cg onto live action you need to remove the grain then put the cg in and then put the grain back in afterwards so i'm going to do this with our denoise um, plugin uh, which was new in 6.3 um, so I can show you one of the first uh, new features that I'm going to be able to show you today, which is our new GPU uh, acceleration. So I'm just going to let this denoise on this plate. I'm going to hit play so you can watch uh, how fast we can denoise this plate on the CPU. So you can see down here we're getting about one frame a second maybe on this plate, and we're on HD at the moment. And now I'm going to switch over to our new uh, denoise, which now runs on the GPU. Um, now, th this isn't a very simple algorithm. You know, we're not talking about just color corrects and stuff like that. We're talking about a wavelet-based 12-stage denoise algorithm that we've ported over to the GPU. So it's uh, quite a complicated thing. Um, and if we look at our node panel up here, we have this new option up here uh, for uh, my graphics card in here. I've got an NVIDIA Quadro 6000, and I've got this new option here that says use GPU if available. So this will accelerate our denoise and run it on the GPU a lot faster than it runs on the CPU. Um, one thing I want to make clear here, though, is that in this next version of Nuke, you can run them on the GPU if you have it. But if you don't have a, a GPU, say you're rendering on the render farm, or you put pass the script to somebody else who doesn't have a GPU, there won't be any errors or anything like that. It will just fall back to CPU. So we've made very sure that uh, we have exactly the same pictures coming out on both the CPU and the GPU. So let me just play through this plate now, and I'm going to tick that option so that we use the Quadro, and then I'm going to hit play on this plate just to see the sort of speed ups we get. And already you can see we're getting a lot faster denoising. Uh, we're not seeing those flicking lines anymore. Um, it's doing a, doing a much quicker job. So already you should be able to see we're going to save quite a lot of time uh, denoising that sequence. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is um, our brand new uh, tracker, or the updates we've done to our tracker. So in this shot, you can see uh, there's a lot of people kind of moving around here. And some of them are moving in front of this uh, kind of uh, building here where we're going to do our replacement with the CG. So what issue we're going to have is... Let me show you where the CG goes in. The issue we're going to have is as we put the CG in, because the people uh, are walking in front of it, they're going to be flattened by the CG, right? So we have to roto all of those characters so we can put them back on top of the CG there. So to do that, I'm going to use the tracker to assist in this. So let me just switch over to my script with the tracker. So here we have our plate. I've left the grain in in this particular example. And then I'm going to put down our new tracker node. Okay. So now we're going to go full screen here. So the first thing you'll notice with the new tracker is we have this tracking toolbar up here. So it means we can go full screen, focus on the picture. We don't have to have other panels open and so on. Um, so what I want to do is I want to track this character that's walking along, uh, walking along here across the screen. So I'm going to show you is this new feature we call keyframe tracking. So what it allows us to do is set keyframes throughout the track where the tracker has to pass through. So this means that if, if it gets lost at any point, it will still pick up and continue the track. Now this is really, really useful because those of you who are you know, familiar with tra doing tracking, um, you'll all know that when the tracker gets lost, it's very uh, painstaking because you have to babysit the track and then adjust it after it gets lost. And then maybe it gets lost again, you have to adjust it again. Um, so with this feature, it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to do a track. So let me show you. I'm going to move our tracking area over the guy's head, like so. 
And we have this. This is our, another cool new feature, this kind of preview window. So I don't have to zoom in. I can just look at this window and adjust my tracking window. So let's get the guy's head and then set a key for my keyframe tracking and then scrub along a bit, set another key, scrub along a bit, set another key. You know, and we could do this maybe every 10 frames or so. Now I know that this track is going to get lost because the shape of his head is changing. It's moving through lots of different specular highlights on the ground here. There's lots of other things going on along here. So I, I hope it's going to get lost. Is that, I, can't even, I can't even tell where his head is in this shot. <laughs> Probably about there, right? So if the tracker actually manages to do that, I'll be very surprised. OK, so now we've done our keyframes. So the tracker will have to go through those points. And now I'm going to key, keyframe track. First thing you'll notice, if uh, you're a user of Nuke, uh, uh, earlier versions of Nuke, that tracked a lot faster than before. So we've done a lot of work on the speed. You can see also that it has got lost at this area over here, but it continued afterwards. So this is a key point. You don't have to babysit the track. Now I'm going to show you our other new thing in this tracker, which is this headlight system. So you can see we've got green little markers here. And then over here, it goes red, which means bad. <laughs> And over here it goes green again, which means good. OK, so I'm going to show you how quick it is to fix this track up, track up as it gets lost over there. So I'm going to pull back to before my track. You can see up here these things are lighting up as well. So as I'm on a keyframe, it goes orange. As I'm in between keyframes, it goes yellow. So I'm going to move to an area where it starts to go wrong. Maybe there, and correct it with this little preview window up there. And you can see what it does. It retracts that area, just, just that area. You can see again where it goes wrong. It's gone wrong. Move it into, back into position. Retract just that area. And there you go. It's done. So hopefully you can see that's really going to save you a lot of time. Um, I'm going to show you one other thing. This, this will be uh, really good uh, to hear for a lot of new users out there. Um, this is our tracking uh, control panel here. What you will notice is before you could only have four trackers. Now you can have as many as you want. So I'll give an example why that might be useful. Just say we wanted to stabilize this plate. There's a lot of noise going on. So maybe it's going to be a bit of jitter in there. Um, so one way you could solve this is uh, to uh, do a bunch of trackers and average them out. So I can show you how easy that is. I can just add a tracker there, 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 maybe here. How many do you want? Six, five, another one up there. And then I can select them all and track forward. And they all go together. And you can see how fast that is. And let's just do a few frames. That's probably enough for this demonstration. And you can see there's a little bit of high frequency noise in there. So what we need to do now is get an average of those five trackers. Really, really simple. All I have to do is go up here, select them in the uh, tracking control panel, click on average tracks, and you've got one average track of all those trackers. Um, and then you can stabilize them with that or link it to uh, another shape or anything you want to do with that track. So I wish I had time to show you everything that's new in the tracker, um, but that just gives you the flavor of uh, what we've got in there. So we're going to switch back to our plate here, and then I'm going to show you two more things, and then we're, then we're going to be done. So uh, we've done a really big update to our depth of field or Zblur plugin. So I'll give you a look at the uh, kinds of things that we've got in there. Uh, the old Zblur didn't have very many options for artistic control over the bokeh. So all you got was this kind of uh, circular effect. Um, so not that much in terms of uh, artistic controls. You can also see how slow it is. See, it's doing a lot of work uh, to generate this uh, kind of defocus effect. Um, so we've also put that on the GPU. So we have used GPU if available on that. And we've added a lot more controls. So you can see how much faster that is already. And we've added a lot more controls here in the control panel uh, to adjust uh, the artistic look of this bokeh. So one thing I'll note is I've faked the depth here with um, a depth map, just with a ramp. So I've faked it so it, it starts off close to the camera and then moves away. So it's not a perfect depth map, but it's enough to fake some depth of field on this shot. Switch back to RGBA. 
So I can move my focal point around, like so. And I hope you can see how fast that is uh, doing a depth of field on that, on that plate on the GPU. So I'm doing quite an extreme defocus there. Let's move that over there. Let's adjust this bokeh now. So I'm going to pull this down a bit. So we have all these new options for adjusting the look of this uh, defocus effect here. So I can go to a bladed look. And now you, I hope you can see this is more of a five-sided shape. I can adjust the roundness. So if I want to make it squarer or rounder, I can, like so. I can even look at my filter shape and adjust it in this panel. So I can make it rounder, squarer, uh, adjust the number of sides of the, the lens aperture, and so on. And we've got lots of other options in there, which I don't have time to show you, really, but about uh, adjusting, highlighting, and so on. So if those presets are not enough, you can actually make your own shape yourself. So I'll show you an example of that. What I did over here was I, I, I faked a little lens shape that we made up with a little bit of a chromatic aberration, just like a real lens would have. So we can see the red, green, blue is slightly offset here. And then I'm going to hook that up to our Z blur, like so, and then choose image rather than a preset. Let's just switch back to the result. Zoom in here so you can see this chromatic aberration. And then I'm going to switch to image over here. And now you can see that we have this sort of slight shifting of the bokeh in the red, green, blue channels. So this is much more realistic um, kind of lens blur. OK, I've got one more thing to show you, and then we're going to give it a, we're going to wrap up. So uh, we had added a point cloud generator in um, an earlier version of Nuke. Um, this has had a really big update as well. So um, this scene, we've tracked a camera. And then we've run the point cloud generator over this um, to create a 3D representation of this scene. And this is really useful. Just say you want to do projections on it. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is use this 3D model of this scene to get me a better depth to drive my uh, depth of field effect um, instead of using that ramp that I had before. So let's have a look at the point cloud that we get out of this with the point cloud generator. So let's just close some of these panels. Go to my groups. So hopefully you can see that that is a pretty good representation of the scene, right? You can see the ground here. You can see the buildings. And then finally, you can see this uh, area of the palace or, or the building here. So you also can see that there's different colors for all the sections. So I set this up by adding groups. So you can group your point cloud into different sections. And I can show and hide them. So this is really useful to uh, be able to uh, separate different parts of the point cloud. The other thing that's really cool is our new mesher. We have a mesher now built into the point cloud generator. So this is different to the Poisson mesh that we had in um, earlier versions of Nuke. Um, and it uses a solve to be able to create a much better uh, mesh. So say we wanted to create a mesh of this area over here. Really simple. Let's go to my point cloud generator, select the palace, click Bake to Mesh. And then we give it a second. Bam. Hello. Yes, we get a mesh out of that. So I'll give you a look at that. And hopefully you can see that is a pretty good mesh of the inside of that building. So let me show you why you might want to use this. So I, I built a little scene out of this. So I took that mesh, fitted some cards through the point clouds, like so. So we fit some points just using the normal nuke stamping function to fit some cards. And we've roughed out some geometry now of roughly of that scene. So if I look through the shot camera now, you should be able to see that. I hit play, you should see that we've got a recreation in 3D of that scene. Then what I'm going to do, um, I'm not going to project on it in this case. What I'm going to do is take the depth out of that so I can use that depth to drive my depth of field effect. So we're going to go over here to our Scanline Renderer. I'm going to view that. I'm going to switch to depth and then switch to the 2D view. And hopefully you can see there, if I dial up the gain and the gamma, we have this depth. Let's move over here which is a much closer representation of the depth than we had before with, the, uh, with my fake mat. We can see the palace over here. We can see it receding in the foreground, in the background there, and the, the ground plane. So then I'm going to get that depth. Go back to RGBA. I'm going to get that depth and feed it into my Z blur. So this is my Z blur. So this is the Z blur before. 
and then let's turn my gain and gamma down. And then I'm going to hook that up to my Zeblo, my depth. And then move my focal point around. And hopefully what you'll see now is this is a much cleaner version of the depth because in, inside the buildings here, we're in focus. Outside, we're out of focus here and here. Okay, that's about all I have time for uh, today. That's just the tip of the iceberg and what's coming in the next version of Nuke. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm John Wadalton from NAB. Thank you very much, DV Asia. <laughs>